वेलकम बैक गैस सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ बिगनेस गाइड वीडियो टू ईथर एस एस टू पी एस टू एंड्रॉइड एम लेटर दिस एम लेटर इज बेस्ड ऑन द ओपन सोर्स पी सी एस एस टू पी एस टू एम लेटर इट इज कम्प्लीटली फ्री इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर इंटरनेट एक्सेस टू रन एनी गेम द डेवलपर ऑफ दिस एम लेटर रिकमेंड्स हैविंग एटलीस्ट स्नैप ड्रैगन एट फोर्टी फाइव लेवल ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस फॉर अ डिसेंट एक्सपीरियंस नाउ आई हैव टेस्टेड दिस एम लेटर ऑन लेस पावरफुल प्रोसेसर फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑन स्नैप ड्रैगन सेवन ट्वेंटी जी प्रोसेसर I was able to run many games at full speed especially after tweaking a few settings. In this video I will be sharing with you these tricks and settings. The emulator does not come with any PS2 games. It requires a BIOS file to run. PS2 games and BIOS file are copyrighted software. You are supposed to dump your own PS2 games and obtain the BIOS file from your PS2 console. In general for emulation Snapdragon processors are recommended due to Adreno GPUs. Good thing is that the developer of this emulator has optimized the emulator for Mali GPUs. In this video I'll be using my Redmi K50i Dimensity 8100 processor to showcase the gameplay of God of War Part 2. But still I would recommend you guys to get a phone with Snapdragon processor if emulation is your priority. Now I'll be talking about the different builds of Ether SS2 emulator. You can download it for free from Play Store. From here you'll be getting the most stable build of the emulator. As you can see I have enrolled into the beta program. This is completely optional. Now I'll be receiving new updates more often than users who are not enrolled into the beta program. I can provide my feedback to the developer, help them improve. If you're not interested in doing that and just want to stick with the most stable build, you can exit from the beta program anytime. Just scroll down and tap on leave here. So this is the website of Ether SS2 emulator. You can download the different builds from here as well. Just tap on download here, scroll down and you can see this is the stable build available on Play Store as well. Then we have this closed alpha build. New features and performance improvements will be introduced with the alpha builds, but these builds may be buggy, may break a few games. These builds are for the testers, no support is provided for them at the end of the month. These new features are incorporated in the Play Store build. After rigorous testing, ironing out the bugs. Let me just show you the different builds. As you can see, latest version. You can always go to the Discord channel of Ether SS2 emulator to ask for help. Just ask for it in the right section. I'll give the link to Discord channel in the description of this video. A detailed FAQ is available on Ether SS2 website. A lot of queries have been answered. If you have any doubts, you can always refer to this FAQ. For example, improving game performance. As you can see here, developer has recommended using the Vulkan renderer, especially if you have a Mali GPU. Note that some games may perform better with OpenGL. They have also recommended to underclock the emulated CPU by setting the cycle rate to a negative number and cycle skip to a positive number in system settings. This is exactly what I am going to show you in the later part of this video. The developer has also stated, irrespective of the performance updates this emulator receives, it won't support 32-bit hardware and software. It's too old and outdated. Back to the emulator, let's start it. So this is what you are going to see when you'll start it for the first time. Set up wizard. Let's do this. Tap on next. Again, this is the same FAQ. Next. From here, we need to select the settings. The optimal safe settings will provide the best compatibility but may not perform well on devices slower than a Snapdragon 845. I am using K50i Dimensity 8100 processor. It's a flagship processor. Performance is really very good. Then we have the fast unsafe setting. It may help in improving the frame rates on low-end devices at the cost of breaking games and inconsistent performance. I'll stick with the safe defaults. We also have the option to set per game settings. I'll just set the aspect ratio to stretch fill screen. This is entirely up to you. You can select white screen if you want. Open GL as the GPU renderer. We also have the option to select Vulkan. Software mode is used for debugging. There will be no graphical bugs but the game will run very slowly. Open GL and Vulkan are different APIs. In general, Vulkan is the superior API. It is also the newer one. In the FAQ section, the developer has recommended to use Vulkan in order to improve performance. But this is not the case with all of the games. Some games will run better using Open GL. I'll select Vulkan here. Upscale multiplier resolution. 
दे हैव लेटेस्ट सपोर्ट्स फ्रैक्शनल रेजोल्यूशन स्केलिंग एज यू कैन सी वन पॉइंट टू फाइव एक्स नेटिव वन पॉइंट फाइव एक्स नेटिव जनरली आई स्टेक विथ टू एक्स नेटिव रफली सेवन ट्वेंटी पी रेजोल्यूशन द मैक्स रेजोल्यूशन डेट आई यूज इज थ्री एक्स फॉर गेम्स डेट आर नॉट वेरी डिमांडिंग ऑन द सी पी यू आई डू दिस इन ऑर टू अवॉइड ओवर हीटिंग इफ अ गेम इज वेरी डिमांडिंग ऑन द सी पी यू एंड यू इंक्रीज द रेजोल्यूशन टू थ्री एक्स इट इज गोइंग टू ओवर हीट योर डिवाइस फोन्स यूज पैसिव कूलिंग दे आर अनेबल टू सस्टेन सच अ हाई लोड एंड दे क्विकली थ्रॉटल परफॉर्मेंस गोज डाउन मोस्ट ऑफ द फोन्स कम विथ फुल एच डी प्लस रेजोल्यूशन सो गोइंग ओवर थ्री एक्स रेजोल्यूशन विल गिव यू डिमिनिशिंग रिटर्न्स यू ऑल्सो हैव द ऑप्शन टू सिलेक्ट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एक्स नेटिव रेजोल्यूशन इट्स वे टू लो गेम विल लुक वेरी ब्लरी ओनली यूज दिस इफ यू हैव अ वेरी लो एंड प्रोसेसर दैट्स इट विद दी सेटिंग्स है टैप ऑन नेक्स्ट एंड नाउ वी नीड टू इम्पोर्ट द बायोस फाइल आई हैव ऑलरेडी इम्पोर्टेड इट बट इफ यू आर डूइंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम यू नीड टू स्पेसिफाई द डायरेक्टरी वेर यू हैव प्लेस द बायोस फाइल सो आई जस्ट टैप ऑन इम्पोर्ट बायोस आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ फोल्डर इन द रूट डायरेक्टरी ऑफ माई मोबाइल फोन नेम डेट एस पी एस टू रॉम एंड दे एस द बायोस फाइल इट्स अ बिन फाइल आई जस्ट सिलेक्टेड नाउ इट शुड शो अप है सिलेक्टेड आई एम यूजिंग जापान वर्जन वन बायोस डिफरेंट रीजनल बायोस एक्सिस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल रीजन्स लाइक यू एस यूरोप दे ओनली डिफर इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंपेटिबिलिटी ऑफ गेम्स नो अफेक्ट ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस इन केस ऑफ दिस एमिलेटर कंपेटिबिलिटी विल बी रफली द सेम अक्रॉस ऑल ऑफ दिस बायोस टैप ऑन नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाइड अ डायरेक्टरी वेर वी हैव प्लेस्ड आर गेम रॉम्स जस्ट टैप ऑन प्लस है अगेन नेविगेट टू द डायरेक्टरी वेर यू हैव प्लेस योर रॉम्स सेम फोल्डर पी एस टू रॉम आई जस्ट सिलेक्टेड यूज दिस फोल्डर दैम लेटर कैन ऑल्सो डिटेक्ट गेम्स ऑन आर मेमरी कार्ड सो ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज जस्ट स्पेसिफाई दैट डायरेक्टरी एंड योर गेम्स विल बी लोडेड इन द इंटरफेस टैप ऑन नेक्स्ट सेटअप कंप्लीट डैट सेट इट्स जस्ट दैट सिंपल टैप ऑन फिनिश दैम लेटर सपोर्ट्स डिफरेंट फॉर्मेट्स ऑफ गेम एज यू कैन सी डॉट बिन डॉट आई एस ओ डॉट सी एस टी डॉट सी एस ओ एंड इवन डॉट जी सी लेट मी जस्ट रिफ्रेस द इंटरफेस देर यू गो नाउ आर गेम फाइल्स हैव बिन डिटेक्टेड सो लेट मी जस्ट शो यू द इंटरफेस सेटिंग्स जस्ट टैप ऑन द हैम बर्गर आइकन है दीज आर द डिफरेंट सेटिंग्स आई एल एक्सप्लेन अ फ्यू ऑफ दैम फ्रॉम हेयर यू कैन एक्सेस द वर्जन ऑफ दैम लेटर हेयर आई एम यूजिंग वर्जन वन पॉइंट थ्री डैश टू एट सेवन फोर देन वी हैव द लिंक टू द डिस्कॉट सर्वर एज यू कैन सी देन वी हैव द लिंक टू द एफ ए क्यू सेक्शन then we have the link to the patreon page of ether ss2 emulator from here we can change the background image the emulator also supports covers for our games due to legal reasons covers are not downloaded directly we need to provide the url link then we have the save state manager this is very useful from here we can access all of our save states we can load the save state directly from here as well we can also delete them Over time, as you play more games, create more save states. This will take up a lot of space on your mobile phone, so you can delete them from here. If you have specified multiple directories for your game ROMs, but still the games are not showing on the interface, just tap on Scan for New Games. Then we have the Transfer Data setting. Due to the scope storage requirement of Google, you may not be able to access the folder of Ether SS2 emulator that is hidden on a mobile phone. in the android folder this folder contains the save game files so in order to export them you can use this setting transfer data not only the game save files even our game settings and patches will be exported using the same settings you can import all of these files and settings and then we have the reset setting in case you mess up with the settings you can reset the settings from here then we have the controller settings very important I use a Microsoft Xbox One controller with this emulator. Works very nicely. Android controllers are also supported. Just about every controller that I have used with this emulator worked. It also supports touch controls and a lot of customization options. Now I usually recommend a gamepad, but if you want to use the touch controls, you should be able to have a decent experience. So first we have the general settings. From here we can enable the multi tap Theoretically the emulator supports up to 8 game pads as you can see I have enable for the port 1 and these are the different ports 1A 1B 1C 1D if i enable it for the second port now i'll have 2A 2B 2C 2D i'll just disable the multi tabs 
then we have the touch screen settings i'll just connect my bluetooth controller to the phone to show you the controller mapping for the touch controls i use dual analog pad controller view two virtual sticks will be available with this setting we also have the option to select digital pad and single analog pad only one stick will be available controller port port 1 player 1 opacity can be adjusted from here if you set it to 0 virtual controls will be hidden auto hide delay description of these settings have been provided virtual controls will be hidden after a few seconds you can specify the seconds here I have enabled this setting hide with external controller so if our controller is connected to the mobile phone virtual controls will be hidden automatically again quality of life features vibration can be enabled or disabled the device will vibrate next up we have the controller settings port 1 just select DualShock 2 here the emulator supports automatic mapping you can manually map the keys as well for example this is the virtual up d-pad button tap on it and then press the physical button on the gamepad you can see it has been mapped the emulator also supports automatic mapping just tap on it emulator has detected my controller select it all keys have been mapped if you want to clear the bindings you can do it from here I'll map it again emulator also supports macros I have created a separate video showing you the entire process link to the video will be given in the description of this video vibration support is also included this may not work with every controller with my xbox one controller it did work we can also invert both of the sticks as you can see left right up down and both dead zone can be adjusted from here analog sensitivity for xbox one controller i use the default settings with the newer updates the dead zone can be adjusted even for the buttons and triggers port 2 second player hotkey support is also available we can assign the hotkey to our controllers buttons and even to our mobile phones buttons for example let me just show you this quick load tap on it i'll press the up volume button there you go i'll just clear it entirely up to you you can boot into the bios by tapping on start bios from here now i'll just show you the global settings just tap on app settings these are the general setting skip the boot screen description of all of the settings has been provided the developer recommends using the default settings we only need to tweak a few settings like the resolution video backend hardware fixes are also applied automatically for majority of the games i will be showing you the per game settings first i'll go through the global settings safe state on shutdown you can enable or disable it it's entirely up to you theme can be set from here i'm using the default system theme on screen display settings i usually enable most of the settings from here show fps show speed show resolution show cp usage show gp usage show gs stats version device info completely optional these performance stats will be shown in the top right corner you don't need to enable them if you don't want to see the performance statistics if you want to see a summary of the settings in the bottom right corner you can enable this setting but i'll just keep it disabled then we have the system setting now these settings are very important guys ee cycle rate and ee cycle skip these settings are used to underclock the ps2 cpu remember the faq section where the developer recommended if the game is running slowly just try to underclock the ps2 cpu both of these settings go hand in hand there are four levels of ps2 underclocking let me just show you the levels normal mild underclock moderate underclock and maximum underclock in order to get the best performance underclocking of ps2 cpu is not recommended but if the processor is not powerful enough to sustain a high fps then underclocking is recommended so i usually start with mild underclock set the value to 1 and then set ee cycle rate to minus 1 negative value if even after this the game is running slowly i increase the value of ee cycle skip i set it to 2 in most of the cases at this point underclocking is manageable fps is reduced but the audio does not stutter if we underclock the ps2 cpu any further than this gameplay can become a bit sluggish and choppiness may be noticeable completely ruining the gameplay experience 
the extreme underclocking scenario is by setting EE cycle skip to maximum underclock and EE cycle rate to minus 3. Gameplay will be very choppy. Only use it if you have a very low end device. I'll just go back to normal, 0. Safest value, underclocking of PS2 CPU can lead to random crashes. Do keep this in mind. Then we have the affinity control mode. This is used for performance consistency. These are the three performance hungry threads of Ether SS2 emulator. EE that is Emotion Engine, VU that is Vector Unit 1 and GS that is Graphics Synthesizer. If any of these cores is bottleneck, the performance will go down. Some games are demanding on the EE thread, some on VU thread, some on GS thread. In case of God of War games, they are very demanding on the VU thread. We can assign the performance priority in these orders. A modern day mobile processor usually has 8 cores. Not all of the cores have equal performance. Some of the processors have 4 performance cores. Some of them have 2 performance cores. Some of them only have a single performance core. By enabling this setting, the CPU cores in our device are sorted from most powerful to least powerful and the threads are pinned to these CPU cores in the order we select. This helps in avoiding the Android scheduler constantly moving these threads around the cores. For example, let's say if one of these threads are assigned to a slow core of the processor, performance will suddenly go down. A new setting was added recently, performance cores. It enables the heavy threads to float among the big cores instead of limiting each thread to one core like the other modes. According to the developer, this may be useful for Pixel or Samsung devices that have aggressive scheduling. Also useful in cases that have unequal distribution of big cores. On my phones with Snapdragon processors, I usually keep it disabled, even in the case of Dimensity 8100 processor. Next we have the multi-threaded VU1 setting. Keep it enabled for most of the games, will help in improving the performance. If the phone's processor have multiple performance cores, instant VU1 setting, keep it enabled as well. Warn about unsafe settings. If this setting is enabled and we are using any unsafe setting, a message will be shown in the top left corner. Due to these unsafe settings, game may break. In the end, make sure enable frame limit setting is enabled, otherwise the game will run in a fast forward banner. The emulator supports fast forward mode, useful for skipping long videos. Here you can adjust the speed. By default it is set to 200%. You can also limit the normal speed from here. Then we have the graphics setting. GPU renderer can be selected from here. Upscale multiplier. This is the resolution. I usually keep the other settings as it is. Texture preloading set to full. Save setting. Does not break the game. Will help in reducing the stuttering. Hardware download mode, very important. It's a speed hack. By default, it is set to accurate, recommended. Performance in many games can be improved by using disable ignore transfer setting. But this can introduce some graphical bugs. I usually keep it to accurate for high-end processes. Aspect ratio set to stretch, enable widescreen patches, enabled. I enable the threaded presentation setting as well. You can see the description here. Can improve performance on some Mali devices. That's it with the global settings here. Default audio settings. Memory cards, very useful. From here we can create new memory cards. Also import a memory card. Default size of PS2 memory card is 8 MB. I'll just create a 64 MB memory card. Select 64 MB. Give it a name. Test. Tap on create. Our memory card has been created. In order to select it, under the memory card one section, tap on card name. And there is a new memory card. It has been selected. Make sure card enable setting is checked. That's it. Game list. Specify the directory where we have placed our ROM. BIOS. Advanced setting. I stick with the default settings here. Only tweak with these settings if you know what you are doing. And this is what the developer recommends. So that's it with our global settings. Now I'm going to show you the per game settings. In order to access the per game settings, just tap and hold on any game. We have these different settings here. Create launcher shortcut. Choose cover image. Game properties. Load state resume game start game. 
so i'll just tap on game properties now i can set the per game setting first we have the summary for the game from here you can obtain the crc code this is very useful when you're looking for cheat codes and patches for a specific game then we have the general setting from here we can directly copy the global settings set optimal settings fast settings these settings will be applied only for the individual game patch codes can be enabled from here using the patch codes we can apply cheats i have already shown you how to do this link for the video will be given in the description of this video so as you can see guys these settings are neither enabled or disabled center option is selected this means global settings are applied system settings i have not underclocked the ps2 cpu ee cycle rate set to 100% zero ee cycle skip set to normal zero again i am using the global settings graphic setting using vulkan as the gpu rendered 2x native upscale multiplier not set means global settings that's it audio settings default memory card setting default game fixes using the default settings advanced setting again i'm using the default settings from here we can enable the manual hardware fixes with the newer builds of ether ss2 emulator the manual hardware fixes are applied automatically for most of the games we don't need to tweak them completely disabled that's it with the settings now if you encounter some bugs in a game you can always refer to the pcss2 wiki for that specific game let me just show you the wiki page of god of war 2 this is the pcss2 wiki page for god of war 2 from here you may be able to find a solution for the bug just scroll down to the end tap on fixed issues here you will see any game related bug and its workaround will be mentioned if any available for this game most of the issues have been fixed that's it with the per game settings let's start the game so in order to access the in game settings just tap on the pause icon here from here we can create the save state for any game 10 slots are available and you can see my save states loading the save states is very easy tap on load state and select any of the slot then we have the toggle frame limiter option basically the fast forward mode as you can see I'll just disable it. Then we have the toggle software and remote used for debugging. Exit game. Apply patch codes from here. Change disk. Reset console. Basically, it will restart them later. We can access the per game settings from here as well. Just tap on this I icon here. So if you want to change settings on the fly, you can do it from here. Then we have the global settings. Controller settings. Now let me just show you how to enable a specific virtual control. Just go to touch screen here. Add remove buttons. So if you want to enable or disable any specific virtual control, you can do that from here. You can see I have enabled toggle fast forward. Once you are done with your selecting and unselecting of the control, tap on done here. 